It's go time. 18 events, three stops, an epic mountain bike location. And the search to find the single best mountain biker in the world starts right here. World Tour destination number one, Crankworks Rotorua. The road towards the king and queen of Crankworks titles starts with hardtails and cowbells. The 100% dual slalom Rotorua is coming at you. For the guys, it's anyone's game, with everyone from downhill specialists to pump track pinners lining up side by side. For the ladies, 10-time Crankworks dual slalom winner and three-time queen of Crankworks, Jill Kintner is back. But don't for a second think that reigning queen via Verbeek is going anywhere. Racers ready? The 100% dual slalom Rotorua is coming at you. Live and direct from the ultimate experience in mountain biking, Crankworks Rotorua. Yes, 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 yes. What is happening, my people? Mountain bike fans of the world, the wait is over. Has there been something just lacking in your life for the last seven months and you haven't been able to quite put your finger on what it was? I know what it was. You needed a little Crankworks in your life. And it is March, so of course there's no place we would rather be than the Southern Hemisphere, a town called Rotorua on the North Island of New Zealand. This is what it's all about. I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside World Cup downhill racing legend, Andrew Neithling. And Andrew, we're kicking off the 2020 Crankworks World Tour season with dual slalom. And if you remember last year, we had dual slalom, but it was just a little Facebook light in the big show this time. Red Bull TV dual slalom broadcast for all three stops, and we couldn't be happier about it, could we? Well, what a way to start. I can't believe it's our six here in Rotorua. And man, slalom, one of the funnest events that we have at Crankworx, so what a way to kick off. And most of the riders, they come from downhill, they come from pump track. This is the event they love doing. This, there's no pressure, but man, when they get in the gate and they see the competitors next to it, I think it all changes. And speaking of kicking it off, just a couple nights ago, we had the traditional opening ceremonies at the Tapuya Cultural Center. Take a look right here. We had our cameras on site for this ceremonial welcome all the big names in the sport, right there front and center, you see 2016 King of Crankworks, Thomas Slavic, accepting the challenge stick. And that's the way we start Crankworks Rotorua every single year. It's great to feel welcomed by the local culture out here. Have all the riders in attendance. You see Adrian Lorone, Emil Johansson, representatives from a multitude of the different disciplines we have out here, and of course, starting with dual slalom, but this is going to be a long week of exciting, fun and games, speed and style, pump track, downhill, slope style. There's a lot more to come. But tonight, it's all about dual slalom. And Andrew, there's a lot of familiar faces out there. Walk me through some of the main riders that you have your eyes on. Well. It's easy to start with hometown hero Keegan Wright. He won this event last year, so he's going to be the man to watch. It's great to see him here. Yes, he starts his week with the Enduro, but we all know how fast he is in slalom as well as pump track. So there you have it. He was also second overall in this series last year. And with Mitch out of the picture, he could be the man to beat this year. So Keegan Wright, keep your eyes on him. Who's next, Andrew? Well, Aileen Arong. Speaking of seconds, he was second in the King of Crankworx title hunt. So he's going to look to get his title kicked off really well here in slalom. And he's always, always a man to watch in these small bike events. All right, so we're going to keep our eyes on Keegan Wright and Adrian Lerone. Another rider I feel like we can't count out because he's been training so hard. He was fourth in the dual slalom overall from last season. He also qualified second here today. I'm talking about Austin Warren. Austin, great year last year. You landed on the podium all three events. What can you do to go one step high and get that elusive win this year? Oof, that's gonna be a tough one, but uh, the competition here today, um, keep it consistent, like just, with the same times today with the about point three of a difference on each run so just staying steady and strong and just not letting the other component gain your head so just keeping it fun actually but uh honestly i really want to get that win it's been 
really frustrating, but <laughs> it's it's almost there. Hopefully, so today is the day, and uh, let's. I just want to do it. So you you mentioned consistency, but are you willing to lay it a little bit more on the line and potentially crash to try get that win and not get a podium? That's kind of always what we always do, I guess. As you as know, as a racer, we always want to push that extra edge in the final or even in any race. So it's, yeah, I'm definitely down to do that. But I felt like today, like just watching everyone ride, and if you did push that edge here, it kind of bites you in the ass a little bit. So it's not too good. So hopefully just keep it consistent because I've watched a lot of mistakes today and they actually were trying to push it. So. Should be interesting, actually. Well, thanks. We look forward to the racing and good luck tonight. Thank you. Well, that's great to hear from Bubba there. He definitely has his head screwed on straight. I actually had an opportunity to go visit him down there in the San Diego area about a month ago. And the training compounds that they have, I say compounds because they have multiple facilities with slalom courses, he's definitely been working. And it shows with that second place qualification result. Excited to see his performance out here today. But let's move the focus over into the women's category, Andrew. Who are you watching for? Well, that's an easy one. We've got Jill Kittner back. She has won so many times, we almost lost count. But luckily, we've got our analysts on it. She's won this event a huge amount of 10 times, Cap. So you'd be a fool to take your money off of Jill Kittner. Who is going to be gunning for her? Well, via Verbeck. She's our reigning queen of Crankworks. She won this event last year. She's got to be beaming with confidence. But like I said, we've put Jill back in the mix. So it's really going to be a challenge for going up against Jill, who's won it 10 times. Well, Via, like you said, the 2019 queen of Crankworks, I can't think of a better candidate to strap a camera onto to show you this course, the 100% dual slalom road to Rua. Let's check out the footage Via gathered for us in this GoPro course preview. Hey guys, this is Via Verbeek. We are in uh, Rotorua for Crankworks, and this is the GoPro course preview for the dual slalom track. All right, so first get into gear, couple of bumps to sprint through. Soft one, big pop through the rollers. Big bombs, table, roller, other table. Go up the stall wall. Woo. We got some massive flat corners. Oh, finish line, big drift. Sprint, sprint, push through. <laughs> That was hectic. Yeah, that's, that's a great looking course right there. I mean, the course we had the last couple of years was good. It was just off site and this course is on site and better. Take a look at your screen right now. A look at our women's brackets for the evening. Well, Jill Kidna at the top, she's qualified in first position. And then we come down, we got via Verbeck, solid qualification, but let's not forget Casey Brown qualified in second position. We are gonna see these ladies later tonight. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? So much on the line here. Dual Solemn overall points, king and queen points, and of course, they all want the win out here today. This is the 100% Dual Solemn Rotorua, and it starts right now. A lot of it just comes down to like nerves and who can get out of the gate and make it happen. Some guys are just impossible to beat nowadays. I really wanted to show everyone what type of rider I was. I could hear the crowd just lift. This is like a feeling that I've never really felt in bike racing before. This year, and we're talking about not giving the King of Crankworks a nudge. The goal would definitely be a win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to drop some gates out here in the 100% dual slalom road to road. We will be kicking things off with the men's category. Round of 16. Now let's take a look at what those brackets look like, Andrew. Well, someone we didn't speak about yet, Bas van Steenbergen, he's hopped on the podium before. He's qualified in first position. Then let's go down there. People like Matt Walker, McKenna from the Downhill World, Cody Kelly from EWS, BMX, Colin Hudson, Tommy Zula, those are men that have won pump track. 
And then look at that, Austin Warren down at the bottom, he's qualified in second position. All right, Andrew, let's get to racing here. Let's see who we have in the gate. On the left side of your screen, that will be Bass Van Steenberg, and I was watching him in practice. He looks ridiculously fast. And then on the right side of your screen there, that is Greg Watts. Of course, expect to see him tomorrow in speed and style, but no slouch in slalom. Greg Watts qualifying 17th, making it out of that round against Chaos Seagrave to find himself here up against Bass Van Steenberg, and let's see what happens. We are racing camp. Bass Van Steenberg, our number one qualifier. He is a rocket out the gate. Up against your fellow mate from Aptos. Oh my, look at Bass. It looks fake. How he fast is he's not right messing now. around. This is a guy that's put the mahi in during the off season. Cam, that's a Mari word for the work. You can see it paying off here. So clean through these flat turns. Those are going to be interesting as the night progresses, Cam. So Bass Van Steenbergen crossing the line first by a deficit of 0.59. Greg Watts will have that 0.59 on his mind when they work their way back up to the top of the course and switch sides. Let's take a look back at some replays. Well, you impressed. Look at the speed out of Bass Van Steenbergen up at the top. Just calculated through that rhythm section. So rumor has it he's been doing a lot of training in the off season, even going to the BMX track, riding the BMX bike. You can see the way he's pumping through those rollers, his back tire so close to the ground, actually touching down when he was airing. He was like, it was like a hybrid between a manual and an air. Yeah, that's the BMX track just paying off there. All right, next heat in the gate now. We're going to hear a lot of cheers for the Kiwi on the left side of your screen, Billy Meeklem, who really made a name for himself here in Rotorua last year, going up against the 2016 King of Crankworks, Thomas Slavic. So an unknown man last year, but winning the dual speed and style. Here he is in slalom, so we know he can ride turns as well as do tricks. Oh! oh! That's a mistake. That is the inexperience showing right out the gate there. Thomas Slavik, he's clean, great gate start, puts pressure on Billy McLean and forces a mistake early in the run. I am the worst race fan ever because I loved that loss of control and then that save. I know that means that he's going to have his work cut out for him now when they get back up to the top because he's got a 1.39 to make up, but we have to look at that replay again. That was an excellent display of bike control not the losing control part but the gaining it was so impressive here we go coming into this right hander oh oh we've missed it there almost cat like reflexes but thomas slavic what so that's an interesting thing we're going to see a few different ways to get through that rhythm section so it's thomas slavic Experience paying off, he always has an amazing gate start and that often puts pressure on the guy next to him. All right, that was ridiculous. I'm still freaking out over Slavic in that rhythm section. We'll talk more about the complexity of that rhythm section, how that's really going to be a game changer out here in the races as we work our way through these brackets. But next up in the gate, Matt Walker going up against the legend Mick Hanna. Riders ready? Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. So Mick Hanna, legend in the sport, Matt Walker, one of the new school style of riding, but both come from a BMX background, but Mick Hanna with the advantage so far. Matt was able to take it to Mick in the ADH yesterday with a third, Mick only managed a seven. So can Mick get some redemption here against Matt? This is our closest race so far. It's looking tight, both clean, oh, wow. Come on, only seven hundredths of a second separating these two riders. With the advantage going to New Zealand's Matt Walker, Mick Hanna will have basically a drag race on his hands when they get back up to the top. Now, Andrew, we've been talking to some of the competitors before we started racing out here. What are they saying about the differences in these courses? Are they equal? Is one side obviously glaringly faster than the other? Yeah, we're often hearing that sometimes one of the lanes is faster. It's a challenge to keep them even. But these riders are saying they're fairly yeah. even. 
So not much to play for. So when we send these guys up to the top, they're going to switch lanes, and then it's all to play for. It's pretty much a fair dogfight. All right, well, that'll be interesting, getting them back up to the top. But right now, it's all about Cody Kelly out of the States on the left. And then, if you're a Crankworks fan, you are very familiar with the man on the right side of your screen, Adrian Larone. He has been a king of Crankworks in 2017. He wants to do it again. He was second last year. So the points collection starts now. <laughs> So the snap from the man from front up against Cody Kelly. So Cody has opted for a hard tail. He's ditched his enduro bike. No slouch on a small bike. Well, Adrian showing that he means business this year, trying to kick up his King of Crankworx campaign here in 2020. Oh, a mistake by Adrian. He's going to lose ground there. Wow, last minute strike there from Cody Kelly, keeping it consistent. He trailed the entire race. That's an unforced error from Adrian. He was out front. No one was putting pressure on him. Big mistake there from Adrian. Yeah, one small mistake at the end of the run, but let's take a look back at this rhythm section. One thing that stands out to me is how many different routes there are through that. You see them both choosing different strategies. And there you have it. Adrian jumping onto the top of the tabletop. And Here's here we go. He's drifted a little bit wide there. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, it's more than just a mistake. We might, a yeah, that might be more than just a mistake, as you said, Cam. I mean, I don't know if anyone else is reviewing that. So, explain to our viewers who are new to Dual Slum what it really means to be on the wrong side of that gate. Well, if that is the case, you've obviously got to keep both wheels on track side of that gate. And if you don't, you might be facing a max differential All right, here. well, let's take a look back and see front tire on the wrong side. Clearly, he's able to somehow summon that back tire to the proper side, but, I mean, it was pretty obvious looking at that replay. That front tire missed the gate. So we'll wait for timing and scoring to give us clarification on if there will be a penalty applied to that, but needless to say, Cody Kelly will have the advantage going into their next round as we focus our attention back to the top. Colin Hudson going up against Tommy Zula. This is a BMX influenced bracket if I've ever seen one, but look at that. Top of your screen there, top left. You see some names illuminated in yellow. That means they have earned themselves the advantage into their second run. Who will have their name in yellow after this run? We're moments away from finding out. Once again, Colin Hudson going up against Tommy Zula. So no surprise there, BMX background, these boys rock it out the gate there. The teammates both with a winner piece in the Whistler pump track, one in 2018, one in 2019. So there's a lot of bragging rights on the go here. So both clean through the rhythm section. This will be interesting to see who's better in flat turns coming from the BMX background. Oh. <laughs> okay, Colin Hudson through the line first. By an advantage of 0.22 oh, over flag. Tommy Zula. I missed it. No Here we go. We hear Tommy talking about missing that same gate that Adrian Larone missed. Let's take a look back at the replay. These guys both coming from a BMX background, but both of them looking very, very acclimated to dual slalom. Watch Tommy Zula. Oh, a little scrub there, Cam dropping a foot. Well, they looked really composed through the rhythm turns. section, but now we hear them talking about the flat turns, and that's where potentially one of them has made a big mistake. Well, team manager's got to be choked to see them going up against each other in the first round because, of course, it's instant elimination. Only one can move on into the round of eight. Now we have Bernard Kerr on the left side of your screen going up against Keegan Wright. Keegan Wright second in the overall dual slalom standings last year. He won this race just a year ago. Gonna have to get through Bernard Kerr. Keegan a little bit back in qualification, only in sixth position. Bernard Kerr down in 11th. 
hometown hero versus someone that calls New Zealand his home away from home, spending a lot of time in Queenstown. So a little, it's kind of like a second home for him here, Bernard. So some of the fans might be pulling for Bernard. So our winner here last year, Keegan, he's clean through those turns. Oh, wow. Well, that'd be a great one to see go again. That was a very tight race, and not the tightest race we've seen of the day, but 0.12 separating Keegan Wright from Bernard Kerr. Well, it's not all done for Bernard Kerr. He is 0.12 back, but they're going to go back to the top. They're going to switch lanes, and they're going to go at it again. So that's easy for someone like Bernard to make up if he pushes harder in the second run. Look at that. Both riders choosing to go foot out. Look at that. Now, you can have your foot on the wrong side of the gate as long as both wheels are on the proper side. Love that slow-mo. Looks like Keegan's bringing a little, mo little bit of new ink to the 2020 series. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right here. We got Kyle Strait lined up in the gate. An exciting rider who's done it all in the sport of mountain biking. He's no stranger to bike setup, and here's how he chose to set up his suspension for the day. Well, he's gone with 140 PSI. That is a lot of air. Rebound, he couldn't even tell us. He just runs it really quick, and it will be quick if you've got that much air pressure. He's closed all his high speed and 10 clicks of low speed. So basically, he's running it extremely stiff. 220 pounds. This man has a lot of momentum, but he's also got a lot of bike control. Speaking of bike control, take a look at who he's going up against right now, Ed Masters, the man who won the Giant Toa Enduro a couple days ago. So all to play for you. Eddie Masters qualifying in 10th position, Carl Strait a little bit ahead of him in 7th, so there's actually not much in it for these two. See who can make the least amount of mistakes here coming down through the flat turns. Carl Strait, drawing some time back, edging ahead. Oh, wow. no, that's a big mistake from Eddie. I will say. That flag is causing a lot of issues already. We, we are getting a new character in this race, and it is that flag on the black side. But Kyle Strait, I mean, that bike is tracking. I know that we're beginning to see that the black side has a challenging gate at the bottom, but I can't wait to watch this replay. When it comes to rhythm, Kyle was right on it. When it comes to those flat corners, tires on the ground, eyes up, looking at the exit. Take a look. So he's just pushed the front on the right hander, oh, and he's man. no chance of getting back tight these gates tonight. So Kyle straight, I don't think with his best way through the rhythm section, I think he can pull it some time back there on some later runs. So Kyle straight looking good. So I'm receiving word right now what we're going with for these penalties for missing gates. We're going to the max differential, which is 1.5 seconds. So basically, Eddie Masters crossed the line closer than that, but he'll have to make up one and a half seconds when they get back up and switch sides. So 100% dual slum road to Rua being brought to you by 100%. We cruised down to the Festival Village earlier today. We we're hanging out with Elliot Jackson. He took us on a nice little guided VIP tour. Take a look. Hey, we're in the 100% booth with the new Trajecta helmet. It's a uh, super light for a full face. 870 grams, 24 ventilation points to keep you cool. It's got the new Smart Chuck technology. All these little blue things here that helps disconnect the helmet from your head. That way the helmet rolls instead of your head, helps to prevent concussions. So now I've got it with the Armega goggle. One of the cool things about 100% is they're able to develop everything in tandem. So the fit is perfect, the colors go well together. If you're down here at Crankworks, make sure to come check it out in the 100% booth. Well, back to racing here in the 100% Dual Slam Road to Rua. This is heat number eight in this round of 16. Luca Cometti going up against Austin Warren. The reason why this is exciting is these two guys live close together. They train together, but only one will make it to the round of eight. Okay, Riders, random start. Round of 
Riders ready. Watch the gate. So Austin's got a lot of work in front of him. He's going to get that elusive win. So many podiums in slalom. Three last year. Looking clean so far. Like he said, he wants to be consistent. But in the later rounds, he's going to have to push past that consistency. Oh! Wow. He's pushing a bit it deep though. over this. He's the looking consistent, but he is pushing it. Oh! Oh, is that, that black? Okay. That, that black is flag <laughs> is absolutely going to be oh, one man, of the biggest no talking vision. points tonight. <laughs> Black flag, my I word. Like, Not I saw, I like, even a like battle for Austin Warren. Hard. That is how that you apply absolutely right, expert apply. bike handling. Let's listen to these guys. It's fun to hear them reminisce about the run. If only I would stop babbling, we would have been able to hear what they were saying. But watching Bubba make that flag, you need to have so much time on the bike to be able to be facing the wrong way and somehow keep your eyes pointed in the right way get that back tire across the proper side insane all right well those names that are lit up in yellow have the advantage <laughs> a lot of fun yet to come here in the 100 percent dual slum rotorua do not go away Crankworks, make sure you download the Red Bull TV app because along with all the other sports that they cover, of course, there is tons and tons of two-wheel content out there, both from Crankworks, also from Rampage, many other projects that can be savored, enjoyed, and inspire you to get out on your bike. So download that Red Bull TV app, watch some of that content. We're gonna be bringing you the content all week here from Skyline Road to Rua at Mount Nungataha, as we have been for the last six years. And of course, this is the first stop of three in this 2020 series. So many events, points given out for every single one of these events, and you're going to hear us talking about the race for King and Queen of Crankworks countless times. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna try to walk you through it a little bit. 
And Andrew, you can help me if I leave anything out. But basically, there's points available for every single discipline. You gotta add them up because you. My word, you can become royalty here at Crankworks. There's $25,000 on the line if you can amass enough points and be better than that competitor, Mitro Pilato. He won it last year. We unfortunately won't see him here this year. So Via Verbeek was the queen from last year. And if we've learned anything from the past few years, it's that it always comes down to the wire in Whistler and every single one of these events counts. A former king is currently leading right now based on some results from earlier in the week from the air downhill, Sam Blankensop taking the win from that, earning himself some valuable points, 100 to be exact. Who won 100 points for the women? Well, another former member of the royal family, Jill Kinner, who, I mean, oftentimes we just call Queen Kinner. She picked up a cool 100 points. And there are more points to be won here in the 100% dual slalom Rotorua. And the names who are illuminated in yellow have a good chance of moving into the round of eight, which will be one step closer to those 100 points they can earn for the win out here. We have gotten them back to the top of the course. We have the differentials set. We're going to see who will make it into the next round here between Greg Watts on the left side of your screen and your number one qualifier on the day, Bass Van Steenbergen. Bass has the advantage. Riders ready. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. So Greg has his work cut out for him. As we explained, he's 0.59 back, so he has to cross the line in front of Bass, but not only just, he's got to make up more than that differential, so it is really challenging for him. I would say that Bass Van Steenbergen, your number one qualifier coming into this round with the advantage, is looking like the man to beat. Here he crosses the finish line first, which means he will move into the round of eight. But I mean, he's got a lot of control right now, riding that fast and sliding that back tire so often, you would say, oh, he's out of control, he's going to throw away. But he's looking so consistent. I think that just might be indicative of how hard he's been working in the off season. He's just got that much more bike control, doesn't he? Yeah, he's looking very poised. He knew he's got a little bit of a kind of, you know, if you're in the gate and you've got 0 0.6, you know you just got to keep kind of in line with your competitors. So he rode a smart race. So who's going to be here in this matchup? They've switched sides. It's Billy Meeklum on the right side of your screen from New Zealand. If you hear a lot of cheers from our on-course microphones, that is why. But you might hear some cheers from a fan favorite over there on the left side of the screen as well. Thomas Slavic, a former king of Crankworks. So Slavic, snap out the gate. Huge BMX and four cross background, but look at that, Billy Meeklin. He's clean through those turns and giving it to Thomas Lover. Can he put any pressure and force a mistake? Oh, the experience showing off. Thomas Slavic, he's clawed back. Just got to make it to these flat turns. He's on the easier side here on white. Wow. So it's close, but it's going to be no cigar for Billy Meeklim. He's off to the showers early tonight. But way to go sticking with Thomas Slavic. I mean, Billy Meeklum is a kid who burst onto the scene last year with a big win in speed and style. We saw him throwing tricks. We thought, well, what kind of rider is this kid going to grow into? Obviously, he's got such a diverse skill set. Looks very at home on a dual slalom racetrack. If you're going to get knocked out by somebody, it might as well be a former king. But back up in the gate here, Mick Hanna going up against Matt Walker. So all to play for here in the second heat of this round of 16. Only 0 0.7 in this. That's nothing, Cap. 0 0.07. Yeah, just yeah. seven hundredths. This is a drag race here between Mick Hanna and Matt Walker. Who will take it? Oh, looking a bit sluggish for Mick out the gate there. So Matt Walker, he was on that inside turn. And this is where Mick Hanna should drag a little bit back through this rhythm section. Can he do it? So both of these guys started as youngsters on the BMX course. 
moved up to mountain biking. Oh, Matt Walker, he's an edge to head here. Wow, Matt Walker had the advantage, crossed the finish line first by an even bigger gap. So that will send Mick Hanna to the showers. What a good showing. So as expected, he qualified in fifth. Mick was down in 12th on paper. Okay. Yeah, so these guys are talking. This course is going to deteriorate as the evening goes on. That's interesting to hear, actually. Something to think about is as we send more and more riders down this course, the ruts will continue to grow deeper, and only the strong will survive. Now, if you're talking about strong riders, you got to be mentioning Adrian Laurent. Take a look at some of these statistics. Yeah, you're not the king of Crankworx without being consistent and being a multidisciplined rider. And he's also got two second places in the series, so we know how good he is year in and year out. What can he do in 2020, Cam? Well, so many different disciplines. He's a contender. So second place in the King Hunt last year, you know, with Mitch Ropolato not competing in the Crankworx World Tour, that really leaves the door open for all these front runners, especially a guy who's done it before and been second multiple times okay, in the King Hunt, Adrian Larone, who's going to have to make up a huge deficit right now after missing that gate. Cody Kelly has a 1.5 on Larone. Well, he's made it difficult for himself by missing that gate. It's gonna be a struggle to get out of this round of 16. This is all to play for for his hunt. So Cody Kelly looking poised here to go ahead, but Adrian Lon, can he put some more pressure on him through these flat turns and see if he can force a mistake? So Adrian Lon riding tight, but Cody Kelly knows he's got so much time to play with there, and you can see the frustration Adrian Lon. That was an unforced error. He's only got himself to blame for. It's going to be a tough one to swallow. Oh, there we go, sportsmanship. Sorry, you had a mistake. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's part of the game. Yeah. You know, racing, mistake, you never know. <laughs> you have to be clean if you want to win. Yeah, yeah. But good racing, good. Thanks, bro. Good luck tomorrow, huh? Thank you. All right, that's enough voyeurism for the day. That's really cool to hear the sportsmanship out there. And uh, of course, Cody Kelly explained to Adrian Larone, yeah, you got another event tomorrow, Speed and Style. So look for Adrian Larone to just be gunning for it in Speed and Style, trying to make up a little redemption after getting knocked out here in the first round. But Cody Kelly looking so strong. Did you see his start? He was putting down so much horsepower. That front tire did not touch the ground until the first berm. And speaking of horsepower, these BMX guys can sure show anyone how to gate start. Oh, that is just lightning out of the gate. So teammates out of the USA. 0 0.22. That My word. Colin's got the advantage, but man, these guys are neck and neck. Oh, safely through that gate. Oh my wow. Three hundredths of a second. What do you think? These guys train together or what? So tough for Tommy Zuli. He's going to go home early. This is where the BMX, look how low they are staying. Oh, I love it. I love seeing that BMX technique through the rhythm. Oh, a little over jump there. I mean, this is like synchronized swimming. They have similar riding styles. They're neck and neck. So great visuals. Tommy Zula, unfortunately, is not going to advance. Colin Hudson, we'll see him in the round of eight. Who is he going to get matched up against? Cannot wait to see. Yeah. All right, so Keegan Wright, basically a fixture on the Crankworks World Tour for the past few years. But if you think back, he burst onto the scene right here, Crankworks World Tour on the pump track and then of course he expanded into so many disciplines and just set this set the stage for so many riders to follow in his footsteps we had joe simpson we had connor mahuika we had billy meeklum all launching their careers here so i mean if it weren't for crankworks coming down here to new zealand where would these guys have the opportunity to show their stuff so it's great to see a guy like keegan now just turning it into a career 
he now has the advantage over one of the top riders out there, Bernard Kerr. So will he make it into the round of eight? Let's find out. And Kerr, another man that's part of the furniture here at Crankworks, a former king of Crankworks. So he's adding a few disciplines to his normal busy week here in Slalom. Neck and neck through the rhythm section over the stall wall. So Bernard Kerr should have the advantage in these turns. He's an unbelievable bike handler. Wow, he makes it to that tough gate, but it's not going to be enough. So Keegan Wright holding down the fort here, putting on a show for the Kiwi crowd, giving them something to smile about and sending Bernard Kerr to the showers. We will, of course, see Bernard Kerr back for many events as we work our way through this week because you know that former yeah, King is looking to get that crown down. back. Wiggle. Right now, it's all about all right, no two more down. riders looking for those points. Ed Masters, who won the giant Toa Enduro presented by Camelback a couple days ago, and Kyle Strait, who's also participating in more events here in the 2020 season than usual. Let's take a look back and look at Keegan's run right here. Oh, we're, I'm hearing right now that we're going to be watching these flags. Let's take a look at Keegan's tires and where they go here once we get into the gated section. All right, so through the rhythm. That one looks clean, right? All right. I think the moment in question might be the finish stretch here where we have those flat corners. Let's take a look. All right, clean through the right-hander. Clean through the left-hander. Like like I don't know, yeah. Andrew. It looks good to me. See, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to see. But we've got the slow-mo and it's his pedal and his foot that's often knocking the gate so it looks like it could be something else unless it was that kind of a kind of a drifty left into a berm at the top that they were referencing there we but no it. dq so that's good for him all right well the course officials keeping everybody honest out there making sure there's no mistakes but you know what speaking on the topic of of uh, penalties the guy on the left side right here, if you remember from run numero uno, had some issues with that final straightaway, didn't he? Yeah, he was pushing way too hard on the right, oh. got late, and he had no choice but to go straight over the gate, so his wheels need to be on the other side. He gets Mac differential, but it's set at 1.5, so if you can get out front, hope for a mistake from your competitor, you can get that back. It is and he's manageable. up against a veteran. The experience is insane that Carl Strait has. It's one of the best slalom riders that the sport has ever seen. Well, that's why we love dual slalom, is it's so unpredictable. Anything can happen. So Kyle Strait needing a smooth run right here. So this is where tactics and strategy comes out. Get out clean out the front, and then maybe tone it down a bit and ride safe. Making a few mistakes here, though. He kind of bumped one of the rhythm sections there, but he's back on it now. <laughs> so Kyle just needing to make all these gates here. He has a wall. Oh, it's so still tough to that gate. for comfort when you figure you got a 1.5 to your advantage. So straight, holding down the fort, but just barely making that black flag there. But Kyle Straight will advance into the round of eight, one step closer to some of those valuable king points. Ed Masters will not pick up another win here. Already got one from the Enduro, as we mentioned earlier, but we load up our next heat. This will be the round of 16, heat number eight. Austin Warren, your second place qualifier, going up against a guy he rides with on a regular basis, Luca Cometti. Luca Cometti with a .18 to get out from under here. Austin Warren in top form coming into this first event of the 2020 season. Yeah, and I'd say I'd like to be where Austin is. I'd like to be in those white gates down at the bottom because if there's any pressure or you're needing to push, you'd rather be on the white side after we see all the mistakes on the black. So Austin's got to be patient here because that lane is a little slow at the top, but then here it catches up. So smooth. This is where this race gets exciting as they head into the flat turns camp. Here we go. 
Oh, Both wow. riders smooth through those final straightaway gates. Oh, and there you have it again. Austin's going to go up against Kyle straight in the round of eight. So friends and training partners, they're going that? head to head. How about that? Bubba's first two heats. He's going up against the two guys he rides with most often all the way up on the other side of the world. And that's what makes you wonder. When they're training together, obviously, they want to help each other out, but they're going to face each other. You never know how it's going to work out. But take a look at the way it's been shaken down so far. So only a few surprises, but not many. Bass Van Steenberg, and he's up against Tavis Slavik. Matt Walker's gone through. There's your surprise. Cody Kelly, great rider, but Adrian had a big mistake. And Austin Warren, he's made it through. So the round of eight is set here. We will bring it back to the women. Pick them up at the round of eight in the 100% dual slalom road to Rua. Stick around. race fans it's time to get back to racing here and we're going to pick up the women's category at the round of eight they didn't have enough to fill a full 16 field but all these top eight cool slalom racers in the women category love kicking off their season here in the southern hemisphere and one of the main reasons is aside from just the racing you bring your trail bike and there's so much amazing riding to take advantage of in the Fakarewa Rewa forest. Right here, we're on board with 2019 Queen Via Verbeek, the woman who won dual slalom here just a year ago. She was also the dual slalom overall champion for the 2019 season. And dual slalom is one of those disciplines where the more time you spend doing all different types of mountain biking, it all helps you when you find yourself in a situation like this right here where you are in the gate up against one of the fastest competitors in the world. You're on screen, Kialani Hines, looking to pick up some points here today as well. So big names out there in the women's field via Verbeek, Kialani Hines, 
Who else? Oh, Jill Kidner, no surprise, qualified in first. And we come down the brackets. Look at Vaya Verbeek's got to go up against Annika Biet, and that's going to be a huge matchup. And that's only the round of eight. Kalani Hines. And then, as we see, we've got so many names here. and We're in the round of eight, heat one here in the ladies. All right, well, speaking of names, there's a big one in the gate. Jill Kintner, so many accolades to her name, one of which was top qualifier for this race right now. So, Martha Gill. Just such a fierce competitor, Jill Kittner. Man, it seems like sometimes when she's down and out, you put it back against the wall, and that's when she performs the best. We've seen it time and time again. If she's behind in the first heat, she'll come back in the second. Oh, that is a tough rhythm section there. Not the biggest flow just yet. So, Jill Kittner. She's got a couple bike lengths on Martha Gill. She's going to take the advantage and we'll get them back to the top for heat two. All right, so a really tough rhythm section here. You see this very deep pit. There it is right there. If you find yourself not being able to air up and over that pit, you're going to lose speed. Luckily, Joel Kintner with a lot of speed to spare the number one qualifier. Absolutely on form already evidence to support that. She won the Air DH yesterday. So if Jill Kittner is able to get through this bracket here against Martha Gill, it'll be interesting to see if any of the other racers in the field are gapping those deep pits. Because she did lose speed there. She had speed to spare. But another part of the course that's really proving to be challenging for a lot of the riders in the men's field is those final gates in that finish line straight away. It'll be interesting to see how the women take to that section of the course. And of course, the riders left side, the black side, proving to be more challenging than the white side. We've seen numerous riders miss that gate right there. So let's see if Jill Kintner had her eyes up and her tires on the correct side of these gates. She's on the white side, but let's look at Martha. Oh, just fighting to stay on the correct side of that gate. That back tire, I mean, that's the, the area in question right there. That back tire was so close to missing. I think that's what's going on right now is they are reviewing footage to make sure there was no missed gate. We'll keep you updated on that, but right now it's all about the 2019 Queen via Verbeek on the left side of your screen going up against Annika Bearton. Now Annika qualifying in fourth here. Via Verbeek qualified in fifth. So very, very tight. You can expect this race to be. Annika Bearton, the experience paying off here. Clean through the top here. Via Verbeek beaming with confidence off to the Queen of Crankworx title last year, but she's got to get off to a good start because she lost points with a bit of a mistake in ADH yesterday. So she doesn't want to have any more unforced errors here. So clean through the course here. This is where it gets tricky for the ladies. So Vaya will take that advantage into the next heat. So Vaya, 0.47 ahead of Annika Bearden. A very convincing lead there, but let's take it back and really talk about this one section of the course, the rhythm section, and most notably that pit right there. You see Vaya gap over that, and if you think back, we're trying to foreshadow some of our stories that are yet to come here as we progress through these rounds, but Jill Kittner not able to gap that. She lost a lot of speed, so if we do happen to see Vaya and Jill meet up later on. That could be a game changer right there, that section. Yeah, was it a mistake that forced her not to jump or is that her decision through that rhythm section? Well, time will tell. If it's a decision, she might want to uh, rethink it, but we'll see what happens. Now, Keelani Hines has set a lot of goals for herself this season. We caught up with her earlier to discuss what some of those goals might be. Take a listen. The big goal is winning the Queen of Crankworks. But for me, I just am taking it a race at a time. And I want to stay in there with the points. I want to stay consistent. I want to win a dual slalom. That's like honestly bigger than anything else for me. I don't know why. Like I want to win a dual slalom. That's why I'm so excited to race it. 
this time around. Um, but yeah, I want to win the Queen of Crankworks, so yeah. <laughs> Kealani, go get it. So it's going to be fun to root for Kealani now, knowing that that's one of her main goals. She qualified third here, so that is very impressive. She's going to have to make it past Danielle Beecroft, a rider who has been a dual slalom overall champion in 2018. Let's see what happens, Andrew. Yeah, and an interesting race it was. Danielle Beecroft won in Whistler on a downhill bike. A little bit different course to this, of course. But Kalani Hines, that's great that she's setting those goals. It's something she can do. Qualifying in third, so she's got the speed. She just needs the chips to fall in her favor. So out front here on the white lane. I think that's a little bit quick, especially down the, down the bottom here, Cap. So Kealani Hines doing exactly what she needs to do to hopefully accomplish that goal that she set out for herself for the 2020 season, which is to win a slalom. She put 1.24 on Danielle Beecroft. Now Danielle will have quite the task on her hands as they get up and switch sides. But smooth through these bottom gates in the finish line straight away. Take a look in slow motion as Kealani Hines crosses the finish line first. Looks like all that training has been paying off. Targeted training specifically for dual slalom. And here's, oh, wait a minute. Ho -ho. Let's go back. Let's roll this replay right back here. And I want to look at this Let's have a this close game. look Take here. Look. Oh, oh, no, Cam. No. That is a huge mistake. No. OK. Well, there absolutely keeping them honest today aren't they no missed gates no if are going the judges the are looking at that we know what that's going to say another unforced error there i mean that is going She's ahead really no need to miss the gate you go from a 1.24 advantage to a 1.5 disadvantage that's really going to put the pressure on keelani hines in their second run but Mathilde Bernard, a rider who has won Crankworx pump track in the past, she is now spreading her wings into dual slalom. And your second place qualifier out here, the versatile Casey Brown. This yeah, we haven't a spoken one. a lot about Casey Brown, but there's no surprise seeing her in second position. She's just such an all-round bike handler. Riders ready, watch the gate. And if she focuses on something, commits to it, we know how far she can be. This is awesome that Casey's got herself well, here in the ring here of Slalom. So Matilda Bernard, a winner of a pump track event in Leger. Nice to see her here in Slalom. From the BMX background, so she'll go great through that rhythm section. And this is where Casey could excel. On the flat turns. Clean and wow, she was forced through that black flag, so and that's fast. the challenging one. Yeah, Casey Brown with such impressive bike handling skills. She can do it all on a bike. She's choosing to run the full on trail bike here in dual slalom, which is always going to help out with the traction. More suspension, keeping those tires stuck to the ground, the eyes up, making those gates look easy. So Casey Brown will have the advantage there over Matilde Bernard. There we go, that was our eight heats for the women's bracket. So we now have a rider in yellow for each one of those heats. Jill Kintner with the advantage over Martha Gill via Verbeek taking that advantage. Danielle Beecroft over Keelani Hines after that missed gate from Hines. And Casey Brown doing it just moments ago against Mathilde Bernard. So, we're really utilizing our uh, our replays right now because our timing and scoring officials have their eyes peeled for anybody missing a gate. Apparently, we're going to keep our eyes fixated on Mathilde Bernard's tires right now. So this is a gate. That's a challenging gate for the ladies as oh well. Oh, my. Looks like a hop. Ooh. She's sitting a little bit behind the spectators. We can't see. Definitely. She hasn't got round that gate either. So a little bit late on the left-hander, and they don't make it on the right-hander. So it's the same problem that Kalani Hines has had. So, I mean, you're not just seeing racers who are relatively new to dual slalom. You know, this isn't Matilde's first dual slalom race. She raced in Innsbruck last season. But it is such a revered discipline because it's so difficult to be good at. And, and right now you're seeing 
relative newcomers to the discipline missing gates. We are also seeing veterans missing those gates. As we move over to the men's category now, of course, we worked our way out of that round of 16 into our round of eight. Top qualifier, Bass Van Steenbergen made it into that round of eight. And of course, as you move through these, through these rounds, they typically just get tougher and tougher as now Bass Van Steenbergen will have to get past Thomas Slavic if he wants to make good on that promise of number one qualifier. Bass Van Steenbergen, a lot of people are talking about him. We were able to talk to him earlier. Take a listen. Yeah, so opposed to having a berm where you can just push off of stuff. Uh, flat corner, you don't really have anything, and a lot of the times they kind of get blown out, which means like there will be lots of dirt kind of packed on the outside, but that's not necessarily where you need to be. So a lot of the times you need to be real patient and get your braking right, then turn right in the right spot, have your body position dialed, uh, so there's a lot more that's to it, that it goes into it rather than like a bermed corner. Um, and I think a lot of the times people just aren't patient enough through them. And it's really hard in a race, like you're up against somebody else and you want to go as fast as you can, but you kind of have to control yourself and have to slow things down and get through those turns right and flow through them nicely. You hear Bass Van Steenbergen talking about body position. He analyzed this. I'm pretty sure when he's sleeping, he's just dreaming about the perfection of body position and how that impacts what your bike is doing underneath your body. He's been putting it all to work out here, making it through that round of 16. Of course, the number one qualifier, but a formidable opponent here in the form of Thomas Slavic in between him and the round of four. Okay, riders, random start. Riders, ready, watch the gate. And he said it, the word is patience. There's a fine line between being too conservative and patient. Wow, Thomas Slavic is putting it to Bass right now. Great riding from these two. So two different techniques through the rhythm section there. They're over the store. This is where he alluded to the patience. Oh, and there it is. And it's paying off. His strategy through the turns is paying off. Thomas Slavic with a big mistake there, Bass. It's going to take a big advantage. 1.5 camp. No, I don't. I mean, Bass is just really putting to work what we just heard him talk about in that interview. Sometimes you feel like you just have to push so hard, but that also brings about the consequence of pushing it too hard, which is I'm pretty sure what we saw Thomas Slavic do here. Take a look. Yeah, he was very line. committed, but the front wheel just pushing. He's just got his braking too late. Front wheel pushes, and there's nothing you can do with a gate so quick to get round. It's just too tight. So Thomas Slavic will have a 1.5 to get out from under. And they get back up to the top for their second run of the round of eight. But Bass Van Steenbergen doing exactly what he needs to do to deliver on that number one qualifier promise. It's always tough to have that number one next to your name because you feel like you need to win. We'll see how that goes for Bass. But Matt Walker now meeting up with Cody Kelly in their round of eight bracket. The wrist rolled forward here. Yeah, it's a big BMX technique, that one. So Cody Kelly as a rocket out the start. Matt Walker, no slouch himself. <laughs> so Cody Kelly, can he use that little miss up from Adrian to his advantage, get a bit of momentum here, a bit of confidence oh, coming geez. into this round? Where did he find that speed? Cody Kelly. So he's on a hard tail. That could be a little bit tricky here through this flat turns, a little bit less traction. Matt Walker, he's got the advantage, 0 0.37. That's fun. Oh. That's Walker. I mean, just goes to show how fast Matt Walker was going. You saw the acceleration, power to the ground on that hardtail from Cody Kelly, but it was still no match for the precision of Matt Walker. We will have the advantage moving into that next round. But now, Colin Hudson going up against. Keegan Wright, Keegan Wright on the right side of your screen there, Colin Hudson on the left.
So Keegan Wright, our winner here, last time hometown hero. He's got to want to go further than this round. This will be a big disappointment if he can't. So this is where it's going to get interesting. Keegan choosing to drop a foot. Maybe not the best decision. He's lost some time there. Wow, look at that. Colin Hudson putting a point three eight on Keegan Wright. Yeah, our number three qualifier, Cotton Hubs. Colin Hudson. He might be the danger man. Oh, there we go. Yep, we hinted at the fact that this was about to take place. Two guys who ride together every day. Kyle Strait and Austin Warren. Now talking about how they qualified, Kyle Strait in seventh, Austin Warren all the way up there in second place. So Kyle with his work cut out for him, but he's looking strong today. Yeah, we saw him running through the pits. Kyle Strait looked ever focused. We know how well he wants to do, how hard these riders push each other, how much pressure they put on each other, let alone being up against your mate you train with, your friend. So much bragging rights oh. on the line here. Oh, Carl Strait somehow keeping it together but losing momentum there. And he went long in the first double in that rhythm section. Oh, Bubba is <laughs> clean through those black flags. Wow. Well, really good defense there from Kyle Strait. He had. A little no bit of a mistake in that rhythm section, lost a little speed. Yeah, Cam, it looked way worse. Listen, he's talking about it. Yeah, it didn't look clean, but I mean, for how bad that looked, he really did well to only be 0 0.08 down. Into the, into like the roller table up. I've been having to like scrub off of it, then like nose tap it. I almost feel like they're, they're in their kind of training ground and they're helping each other get through a section. Do they realize they're racing each other? <laughs> the funny thing is I talked to Kyle on day one here about what he was thinking about the course. And he mentioned that section right there, how when you're coming in fast, it's easy to overshoot the first double in that rhythm section. And there you go, he did it. But still an opportunity for Kyle Strait to make up for that mistake right there as we get all the riders back up to the top of the course here in the 100% dual slalom Rotorua. Don't go away.
that's what it looks like where we're hanging out. The beautiful Rotorua, New Zealand on the North Island. Such a great place if you love mountain biking. And we have a packed house of fans who, that would be a great way to describe them. They love mountain biking and they love like days like today where you got some of the best riders in the world. The temperature is nice and you got a fantastic dual slalom course that they can do battle on for your enjoyment. We're going to pick things up here right now. Halfway through our round of eight in the women's field, Jill Kinner has the advantage over Martha Gill. That will be the first race we have in store for you here. Now, Jill Kinner, I mean, such a fixture on the Crankworx World Tour for so long. And don't call this a comeback just because she missed a couple events last year. Take a look at some of these accolades she has, and she has not slowed down a bit. Yeah, look at those number. Queen of Crankworx, she's won three of those titles. Pump Track wins 12, Jewel Slalom wins are 10, it might be 11 tonight. And we have to correct that because she won yesterday. So Air Downhill wins are eight. Ooh, I got an idea. How about this? Eight, Ocho. All right, that was a little bit too late, but no big deal. Martha Gill doesn't want to be too late through that finish line, but she's got her work cut out for her because Jill Kinner has a .78 advantage. But as we've seen, anything can happen. Mistakes can happen. Those gates are tough to make. Here we go. And they're off. Jill Kittner got a big advantage here. Martha Gill from Great Britain needs to get ahead here and try to put some pressure. And that, oh no! She got out of that one really well. That's not the way to put pressure on Jill, but she was obviously pushing as hard as she can, and it just came all unstuck there. So Jill Kittner, she will advance. She'll be the first person through to the semifinals here. So Martha Gill pushing it a little bit past her comfort zone there, but that's what you got to do when you're .78 behind Queen Kittner. She's not the reigning queen this year. That would be via Verbeek, but she's won queen so many times. She's always tough to beat, and here's what happens when you try a little bit too hard to beat her. And there, we spoke about it. It's so easy to overjump that. She's overjumped the first one. Oh, my. That could have been way worse than it was. Holy. She's got good backside there on her thigh. Man, that could have been ugly. We saw Kyle straight overshoot in this rhythm section, and that's... The consequence for what happens if you don't save it right there, you have to be so precise. There's only a bike length of space where you want to put those tires. So Jill Kintner, 100 points to her name in this 2020 season. She's committed to all three events. Rotorua, Innsbruck, and Whistler. Can she pick up another 100 here? She's doing exactly what she needs. But now, Annika Bearden going up against the 2019 queen, which means she's the reigning queen via Verbeek. Via Verbeek with a .47 ahead of Bearden. So these ladies, no strangers to competing against each other. Reigning queen of Cranko, so whoa, she gets away with it. That is a, could have been really bad for Vaya. Wow, okay, so she's composed herself. She's back in this with the advantage, so she knows she's just got to ride safe here, and that's all she's doing. Clean through that gate. Oh, neck and neck through the finish line. Point two difference between Annika Bearden and Vaya Verbeek. It won't be enough there for Bearden. Verbeek moves in to the round of four. I almost died. Is this a theme? You don't or what? say that could have been <laughs> <laughs> ugly. Okay, I mean, even the Go most second. consistent riders are pushing it to the edge out here. If this isn't entertaining you, there's something wrong with you. This is on the edge racing in the 100% dual slalom Rotorua. Back in the gate here, Danielle Beecroft, who is 1.5 ahead of Keelani Hines because of what happened in run number one. Now this is going to be very impressive Riders if Keelani ready. can make up this one and a half second. Okay, Riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. 
Yeah, no disrespect to Daniela. I mean, she is a former winner of a slalom event in Wissa, but Kalani Hines qualifying in third. This will be a big upset if she can't draw back this time. So she was 1.24 ahead before they readjusted her time after missing that gate. So she can potentially do this fair and square if she gets going here. She's going to need to hit the turbo booster here in the final straightaway. She is it going to be enough, Cam? 1.5 she needs to make so. up. No, it's oh, point she eight gave three. it a good go, though. Wow. I mean, Kiolani Hines has made it very known that she wants to win a dual slalom race at Crankworks this season. Now, one of those three opportunities to do so has passed her by because of a missed gate in run number one of the round of eight here. So Kiolani Hines out, Danielle Beecroft into the round of four. Now your second place qualifier, Casey Brown, who's got the 1.5 advantage over Mathilde Bernard from another missed gate. Mathilde Bernard with her work cut out for Casey Brown needs a smooth run, no missed gates. Riders ready. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. So Matilde out the gate quick here, Casey Brown, great to see her in slalom, our number two qualifier, drawing back some time here, one more rhythm section to make it through and then it's the flat turns, both of them opting to jump onto the tabletop, cleanly through that section. Casey needs to just keep it smooth here, she has the 1.5 advantage, alright, Casey Brown moving into the round of four, she wants to deliver a great result after qualifying second. It would be something to see Casey Brown and Jill Kinder going up against each other in the finals. Your one, two qualifiers. Now Casey Brown has dodged one bullet. Now, let's see. She'll be going up against Danielle Beecroft in the round of four. We call that the semifinals. Jill Kinder, wow, that's a cool matchup. Two queens. Jill Kinder going up against Via Verbeek. That'll be fun once we get through the men's round and we get to see that round of four for the women is going to be a doozy. But here, your number one qualifier on the right side of the screen, Bass Van Steenbergen will be going up against Thomas Slavic. Bass has the advantage right now. And he's looking, I'd say, faster than anybody. But anything can happen out here, especially when you're going up against the former king. All right, Slavic with the maximum differential to make up here. It's a tricky place to ride from. It's nice to have that advantage. Man, but Bass isn't riding conservatively. I like that approach. I think sometimes when you ride defensively, you ride tight, you can actually make more mistakes than if you just ride pretty aggressive. Good point. This is obviously where you've got to maybe back it off because you know you've got some time to play with. You don't want to do a stupid area in those flags. And he does, that. he just does just that, you know? Bass Van Steenbergen just looking so fast, so pro out there. Doing the right thing at the right time as he knocks off another big name in dual slalom race and Thomas Slavic. Bass Van Steenbergen secured himself a spot in the round of four. Oh, oh great visuals, eh, Cam, over that scrubby dub dub. The store wall. All right, well, Bass Van Steenbergen is doing everything right out here. Number one qualifier. Let's catch up with them. Bass, it's impressive to see you so far. You've qualified in fastest. You're getting through the heats here. How much pressure are you putting on yourself after qualifying fastest and knowing that everyone's expecting you to take this win? I try not to put too much pressure on myself, obviously. I'm just trying to kind of flow and stay loose and... Uh, put some fast laps in pretty much. 
And well, talk to us about those flat turns. We've seen so many people make mistakes, especially on the black lane. What is your strategy through there? I think key is not to override them. Like, obviously easier said than done, but you got to be quite patient through them and make sure you get into the ruts and all that. And yeah, then you can pedal out at the end and uh, be fast. Well, the racing's exciting so far. We can't wait to see the rest of it. Good luck out there. Thanks very much. I mean, everything he's doing on his bike is mirroring everything he's been saying when we catch up with him. That footage we had of that sit-down interview, what he just said right now after keeping his composure in a, in a situation where it's easy to just get overzealous and make a mistake. He said, you kind of kind of just censor yourself a little bit, reel it back at the right time. And just kind of knowing what to do at the right time. He's, he's in rhythm both on the bike and with his focus right now. Yeah, I like what he's doing. He's got a plan and he's sticking to it. So the thought process is done before he's in the gate. Well, the gate has dropped now. Matt Walker going up against Cody Kelly. Matt Walker with the advantage of 0.37. Go back! Well, Cody Kelly is giving it all he's got here. He's on the hardtail. Matt Walker on the dual suspension. And this is where Bass is so good. What are these riders going to be able to do through these flat turns? Wow, committed from Cody Kelly. <laughs> oh, is it going to be enough? I don't think so. There you have it. Shower time from Cody Kelly. Matt Walker, another hometown hero. He's going to advance. He's into the semi-final. I'm pretty sure I held my breath the whole way. Well, that was close. Cody Kelly pretty much chipping away at about half of that disadvantage he had almost almost upsetting matt walker but you know one thing we're not seeing is we're not seeing too many too many racers overcome that differential cody kelly closest we've seen in a little while there but right now let's see if keegan wright can do it he's 0.38 behind colin hudson and you know the crowd is pulling for their countrymen yeah, it's a tall order for him. Can he use that motivation from the crowd? What can he do? Can he rise to the occasion here, Cam? Oh, it's neck and neck. To the last rhythm section, this is where it's tricky. Both looking clean. Colin Hudson, he's putting the pressure on Keegan to make up that point zero, uh, three eight. Oh, I don't think it's going to be enough, Cam. Wow! Whoa! Come wow. on! That Look. is nothing in there. <laughs> and that was so close. I mean, we just talked about it right before we dropped the gate on there that they're getting closer to upsetting those differentials, but that's the closest one we've seen so far. Keegan Wright only two hundredths of second away from digging himself out of the pit. That was tight top to bottom, wasn't it? Keegan Wright, you look back at this replay, was leaving it all out on the table. He wanted it to make it through that round in the worst way. Yeah, awesome racing from these two. Basically a dead heat. 0.02 in it cap. Frustrating for Keegan. Wanted to do great here in front of the hometown. It's not going to be. He's going to have to wait another year. Two hundredths of a second. I mean, a flawless run right there. If he could do it over again, he would just try to take a magnifying glass to that racetrack and try to find those two hundredths of a second. He left laying on the ground somewhere. We'll see Keegan Wright back for more events before we finish this kickstart event of the 2020 season. But right now, out of these two friends, only one can survive. Austin Warren with only eight hundredths of a second ahead of Kyle Strait, who made a bit of a bobble in his first run. Can he make up for that mistake here? Yeah, not his best effort through that rhythm section. Can he tidy that up? So Austin Warren, Austin has to be patient here and not get too distracted if Kyle Strait's got a wheel ahead. Oh, Kyle, so this is the rhythm section. Oh, clean through there, so Kyle Strait. But this is the trickier flag, flat section for Kyle. It's okay. gonna be so close to make up. No, he it's not gonna it. be. Oh, he has done it. Yeah, you're right. Oh my! Wow. There we go. We haven't seen that very oh, often tonight. Yeah. Kyle Strait making it up. 
gosh, that mistake from run number one. Oh. Nice work, Bob. You have a good run? Yeah. He made up for it right here in run number two. Oh, that oh, was the impressive. experience paying off. So Kyle Strait knew that he just had to tidy up that rhythm section. You can prepare for all of the, you know, the bike skills and, and strategies you want, but you just can't prepare for these high pressure situations. It's just like they train at home side by side on the multiple dual slalom courses they have at their disposal. But right now, Kyle Strait just thriving under pressure. Well, let's hear from Kyle Strait, who will be moving in to run to the round of four. Strait, that was exciting racing. We saw you had a bobble in the first run. Did that kind of play into your confidence that if you tidy that up, you could take out Bubba? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Uh, been having mistakes all day, so I'm trying to just figure out how to smooth everything out. Um, it was tough racing Bubs. He's a good competitor. Um, you know, you probably can't even hear me. I'm breathing too hard right now, but anything else? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I like what you're doing in the flat turns at the, at the bottom. What's your strategy for those? Because they're really the most difficult section on track. Yeah, for sure. They're super icy. Um, they're kind of changing a lot every time we ride. But uh, I guess my goal is just to kind of be as smooth as possible and try not rush them. I think that's the biggest and most important thing. Well, all the best for the rest of the night. We can't wait to see the racing action. Thanks, man. What a crazy day for Kyle Strait so far. His first two rounds going up against two of his friends. He knocked out Luca Cometti, and then he really had to fight to knock out your number two qualifier, yeah, Austin we, Warren. Yeah, we saw him. I said, man, I don't know if he's looking too good. And you said, you just think he's focused, and you can see it out on track. He wants to get that win. So Kyle Strait. After a long off season of training, he's competing in a lot of disciplines out here. He's making his campaign for King of Crankworks. And like we say, it comes down to the wire in Whistler. And you think back throughout the whole season, all the points that were gained and lost. That was a big moment right there for Kyle Strait's campaign. It'll be interesting to see if he can make it out of that round of four. Now, earlier on in the week, the giant Toa Enduro presented by Camel Pack, I mean, Part of the EWS Asia Pacific Continental Enduro Series, it kicked off the event here for the first stop of the Crankworks World Tour. And Ed Masters was able to hold down the fort for the Kiwi contingent out there. Let's take a look at how things shook down in all the stages. Rotorua is so unique to anywhere in the country. It's going to be a fun one to spectate if you're, if you're out there watching. Oh, I'm just happy to be back at the watering hole because yep. water is life today. Awesome. A little bit hectic, but not hectic enough to like really put you off your game. It was amazing. It was just off camera, slippery, but like you could just hold it up fast and oh, it's fun. Loved it. Love the trail bike. It's so good. I was just riding good. with some good dudes. Everything was having fun. It was just like seesawing down the whole way, but that was for sure the best. Start, eh? like, I didn't really know if I was going to even make it to the start of the season, so to be on top, you cannot ask for more than that. Eh? Just to get through was really good, and then everyone who made podium did amazing as well. So, welcome back. That was a little recap on how things went down in the Enduro. Ray Morrison and Ed Masters making it happen, making the fans happy out here, because of course they're both from New Zealand, but right now, we're taking a look at those fans up close and personal, courtesy of our GoPro fan cam. We'll be checking back in with that fan cam periodically throughout the night as things continue to heat up. 
And it's doing just that. It continues to get more and more exciting as we work through these rounds. Look at our semifinals here set for the women. Well, a huge one with a queen of crankworks by Vierbeck going up against, well, the lady that's won the most of those titles, Jill Kittner. Dalina Beercroft getting through, but Casey Brown, danger woman tonight, she qualified in second position. All right, Andrew, let's get tech a little bit. Let's talk about tire choice here for dual slalom racing. A lot going on in this course. What is Via Verbeek running? Well, she's running the Minion DHF up front. She's got 35 PSI and 40 in the back. That's quite a lot. So yeah. quite, quite aggressive tires for sometimes slalom when there's more hard pack, there's more booms, but because of all those flat turns, they've got to go for a more aggressive knobbly. So she's running strong treads, but relatively high pressure. You know, she's got to find that balance of traction in the flats, but also decreasing rolling resistance in those rollers and those rhythm sections. So that can explain the 40 PSI in the rear. But look at this, Viver B going up against Jill Kinner, two queens head to head. Yeah, already losing some points to Jill Kitten in the ADH yesterday. You don't want to lose two more if you can help it. So can Vaya push back against Jill Kitten's comeback? So both of them, there, Jill has changed up her line there. She jumped onto the tabletop, so that's good to see for her. Now we're into the flat turns. This is neck and neck cap. Vaya keeping her honest. All right, well, we expected a tight race. There was only 0.28 separating Vaya and Jill. Jill has the advantage going into their second run in this semifinal heat. But yeah, that's what the story is right here. It's the overall battle for dual slalom, and it's also that queen battle. With Jill taking the first two events of the 2019 season off, it left the door open for Vaya. So the big question will be, can Vaya Hold down that crown with Jill competing in all three events this year. There you go, that's what point two eight looks like. So Jill Kinner, she's been doing this her entire life. And you know, that comes with some challenges. She took a couple events off last season, but we caught up with her to talk about what it's like, the quest for longevity in this sport. I just like I'm on this quest, like I want to learn more and be the best I can be because your window as an athlete is very small, right? Like, and I can feel it. I can feel I'm like near the end, you know, which is, is kind of like what's next. But like at the same time, it's like you go as hard as you can until that point and be as best as you can be. And so there's still like little things I le I'm learning along the way. And that's what why I'm here. That's why I have more to give <laughs> and like, you see all the kids here and stuff, and like you can give back to the sport in so many different ways. Like you don't have to just be winning everything, but it's like it helps. And um, I like to do a good job for my sponsors and be a good representative of the sport. And I think this is a great series to do that. Well, I mean, she does just that. She's been involved in in this sport for so long. I actually remember when I was a young kid coming up racing, she was always super nice to me and my brother, always help us out. And I remember that that means a lot when you see such an accomplished athlete give you the time of day. And right now on screen, this is just classic Jill Kinner signing autographs, getting the fans stoked. And that's in between heats. You know, she's still got her game, fa game face on. So I think that's great, her attitude to it. And she has always been friendly. She's really been an amazing ambassador for the sport. And I hope she carries on to do so. So if Jill Kinner is able to make it into the final, who will she be, be meeting up against? It's going to be one of these two racers right here, Casey Brown and Danielle Beecroft. The danger woman of the night, Casey Brown, when she puts her mind to something, she excels, qualifying in second position. Flawless to the rhythm section. So winner of a whistler slalom in 2018, Dan Beecroft, drifting a little bit back behind Casey here. And they're into the flat turns camp. Oh, oh. Beecroft with issues. Oh. And Casey just looking ridiculously strong. So Casey Brown will have that maximum differential to her favor there. 1.5 going to Daniel Beecroft. Like in there, like oh. 
Oh, yeah. So Danielle Beecroft, I think, with the wind knocked out of her after crossing the finish line there. She had that issue coming into the final straightaway, took the back tire to the stomach. So Casey Brown lights her name up in yellow. Wow, that would be something if we were able to see our one and two qualifiers into the final. All right, moving things over to the men as we get this overhead view of who's going to be taking to the course next. Oh, Matt yeah. Walker going up against Bass Van Steenbergen. Bass Van Steenbergen, the number one qualifier okay. for this event. He wants to get a spot in that final. Now remember last year, Bass Van Steenbergen made it into the final. He was gunning for that win, but had a very spectacular crash in that final. So looking to make up for that mistake right now, 12 months later. It's gonna have to get past New Zealand's Matt Walker. So more and more runs that these competitors are getting to do. They're going faster and faster, pushing the limits. Such a fine line though. So you can hear the crowd, obviously pushing for Matt, hometown hero here, but Bass Van Steenbergers, he's got something to say about that. Letting his riding do all the talking here. He's going to take advantage of the Man, next heat. That was top-notch racing right there between Bass Van Steenbergen and Matt Walker. Bass taking the lead, 0.23. Both of these riders flawless in the flat corners. And we've seen throughout the night what the consequences can be if you aren't flawless. But this is what precision looks like. So poise through these turns, they start getting into this rhythm section. Oh, Bass looks so good tonight. Composed, committed, and his strategy paying off in the flat turns as well. Look at the dirt flying off the back tire on what we're calling the stall wall there, that basically spine box section. You come in with too much speed, you gotta dump it somehow, and a lot of these riders choosing to just slide the back tire off the lip. But this, this is my favorite part right here. Let's just watch this slow-mo clip. These flat corners, both Matt Walker and Bass Van Steenbergen. Back tire sliding, eyes up, planning the next gate. <laughs> you wouldn't think they're in a heated battle against each other at one of the biggest world events we have. They're enjoying the process out there. And I'm going to enjoy this heat. Colin Hudson going up against Kyle Strait. Now Kyle just coming off of that big win against Austin Warren, the number two qualifier. Kyle qualified seventh, and so he's finding himself now in to the round of four. Can he make it into the finals? Okay, riders, rain up start. Riders, ready, watch the gate. Yeah, it seems like Kyle Strait's taking longer to get used to this course than some of the other competitors, but now it's paying off. I think he's way faster than that seven qualification dictates here. Yeah, and he's getting that rhythm section better than ever as well. So Colin Hudson, what can he do? Can he defend against Kyle Strait? Oh, Kyle Strait through the line, 0.13 ahead of Colin Hudson. Man. So I think on such evenly matched courses, it's great to take that advantage up to the second run. So huge start from Colin Hudson there. That comes from a BMX background, but really the big picture was fluidity, control, and precision the entire way down from Kyle Strait. But I mean, Colin Hudson's right there. 0.13 is still very manageable. Kyle Strait is definitely going to have to be kept honest in their second run. Yeah, Colin making a bit of a mess of that rhythm section, kind of like how Joe Kittner did. He had to manual up to the tabletop where Kyle Strait was able to jump onto the top. So potentially Colin's going to have something for Kyle in the next heat. So after run one of two in the semifinals, this is how things are looking for the men's category. Take a look, Andrew. Well, Bass Van Steenbergen, he's going to have that advantage. 
And as we saw, Kyle straight, he's got the advantage over Colin Hudson. We're going to send them to the top. They switch lanes and they're going at it again. All right, well, if you're enjoying what you're seeing right here with our live action from the 100% Dual Slalom Road to Rua, make sure to check out the Crankworks YouTube channel. Behind the scenes, features that you can only find by checking in with youtube.com slash Crankworks HQ. Subscribe and uh, just Keep updated, you know? There's plenty more going on outside of these broadcast windows. You can get updates from practice, highlights from past events, because this is a constantly evolving story here in our 2020 Crankworks World Tour. We're about ready to give away some medals here. The 100% Dual Slalom Rotorua. The first broadcast of many here as we kick off the 2020 season. And who's going to be taking away top honors for the women's category in dual slalom? Two queens right here, but only one can make it to the final. Via Verbeek, the reigning queen from this past Riders season. Ready. And Jill Kinner okay, back, Riders. making another campaign for 2020. So Jill Kinner with .28 ahead of Via Verbeek. They're off, kicking off her. Queen of Crankworx title as perfectly as she could in ADH. Here it is, slalom. Baez got to put some pressure on Jill. Both of them clean to the rhythm section though. And here we go, it's the tricky, tricky flat turns here. Both of them clean so far, what's it gonna be? Whoa! By a couple tire treads there, Jill Kinder. Ahead of Vaya, she had the advantage, so Vaya will be out of contention for the win, but we will be able to see her make a run for that bronze medal. So Jill Kinner backing up that first place qualification result. She will be in the final run, final round, looking for that gold medal. But who will meet up with her? Will it be Casey Brown or Danielle Beecroft? Casey right now has a 1.5 advantage. So as long as she holds it smooth here, she should be able to find herself in that final round. Go and unplug the transformer, plug it back in, and she'll check in. Okay, riders ready. Okay, riders, lay them start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Well, tense at the top before that gate drop camp. Oh, Casey huge. Brown, all she has to do is keep it on two wheels. She should make it through here, but that's easier said than done. I mean, that was a huge start from Danielle, but Casey is just so fast on the rest of the course. Well, this is going to be great if we can get our number one and two qualify through the final as planned. Casey Brown just got to get through the flat turns and she'll be matching up against Jill Kittner in the final. There we go. That's always fun to see your fastest two competitors meeting up in the final. That's always going to make for the most entertaining matchup for us, the fans. So Danielle Beecroft will go up against Vaya for that bronze medal, but take a look at those one and two qualifiers who will be gunning it out for that gold medal. So Jill Kintner, your number one qualifier, will meet up with Casey Brown, your number two qualifier. So Casey making it happen out here. Let's catch up with her, Andrew. Well, Casey, it was great to see you qualifying in second position, but Maya, you must be thinking about the win now. Uh, you know, it's uh, pretty exciting. I never would have expected to qualify second today. That was. I thought they got the timing wrong for sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good time out here and I'm just having fun with it. Well, that's great. And what is your strategy through the flat turns? We're asking most riders because that's one of the difficult sections on course. I think you gotta be really adaptable to what's happening. There's lots of different ruts happening and uh, you just have to kind of place your tires accordingly to how the course is changing. Well, it's been exciting so far. We can't wait for the final. Good luck out there. Thank you. Yes, well, 
she was skeptical whether or not there was a timing error when she saw that number two next to her name, but I'm pretty sure she believes the results now. As she's worked her way through all of those brackets, she finds herself in the finals, but what will the story be now for the men? Bass Van Steenbergen with the advantage over Matt Walker. Kyle Strait with the advantage over Colin Hudson. Bass Van Steenbergen looking to do what Jill Kintner did, and that is qualify first and then make it into the final. We are moments away from setting those brackets for the gold medal and the bronze medal rounds. Matt Walker against Bass Van Steenbergen. Bass, 0.23 ahead of Walker. Riders ready. Okay, Riders, random start. Riders, ready, watch the gate. Bass Van Steenberger riding flawlessly all evening, but he's got to get a few more clean heats in if he's going to take that win. Wow, he's committed. Both these riders riding on the knife's edge. Wow, he's got an advantage going into the flat turns. Can maybe tone it down a bit here, do that conservative patient approach. Wow! Drifting the front wheel there though. Wow, I mean, Bass had the advantage there, but he looked to be pushing absolutely as hard as he could. As <laughs> I see the red light. Yeah, that seems his strategy, doesn't it? Pushing as hard as he can at the top. And then he's going to get a bit of a, a chance to kind of play a patient in those turns if he's got enough of an advantage. So here we go. Bass Van Steenberg and everything going to plan out here today. And I think you're right. When he finds himself, himself in those situations where he has the advantage, he's still going all out. Yeah, I love that strategy. He's really good at the top and it's somewhere that you can be a little bit more aggressive. If you make a mistake, you're probably not going to crash. So he's getting ahead before it gets to the tricky flat turns. Kyle Strait versus Colin Hudson. Strait with the advantage of 0.13. Riders ready. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. <laughs> Oh, it is all to play for who is going to find themselves in the final alongside Bass Van Steenbergen. Colin Hudson qualified in third, but Carl Strait, he's been building momentum all evening here, Cam. Carl Strait with the dual slalom course in his backyard. Been training so hard for this moment here. He has the point one three advantage. Yep, that's going to be all good for Kyle Strait. He crosses the finish line 100 of a second ahead. Of course, he had the advantage already, so he will just add to that advantage and give himself a chance to take home the gold out here in dual slalom. He'll be going up against the numero uno qualifier, Bass Van Steenbergen. That is going to be an insane matchup. That's impressive, because qualifying in seventh when you expect a bit more can often knock your confidence. But Carl Strait, He's built his speed throughout the evening and it's paying off. He is through to the final. And did you see Colin Hudson through that rhythm section, putting his back tire down on the back side of the lip just to stay low, airing off of the manual from the back side of the lip. But Colin Hudson doing everything he could to try to get out from under that point one three, but Kyle Strait just too strong tonight. He will be into the final. Look at that, that's what 100th of a second looks like. So, in case you missed it, here's a little refresher. This is what we have to look forward well, to. There you have it, our bronze medal matchup. Hometown hero Matt Walker couldn't get to the final. He's up against Colin Hudson. Carl Strait has got himself into the final against Bass Van Steenbing, your number one qualifier. Well, there will be hardware given away from our next four races. The bronze and gold medal matchup for the women. The bronze and medal gold medal matchups for the men coming up after the break.
Well, where the heck are we? We are where you should be. Come on, come join us in the Southern Hemisphere, the North Island of the beautiful country of New Zealand, a town that we know and love named Rotorua. This is what it would be like if you were here. You'd be cruising through the vendors, meeting people, doing things, hopping on the mechanical bowl. I mean, next year you should just you should just do it. You should get on down here because on Thursday you would be hanging out alongside the dual slalom race course, and the stage would be set to crown a gold medalist in the women's category and the men's category. Who's gunning for it? Take a look at some brackets right now. It's been a good day of racing, hasn't it, Andrew? It has, but it's all to play for Jill Kittner against Casey Brown in the final. But let's not forget, Vaya Vierbeek, she's looking for some valuable points for the Queen of Krankburg's defense here. And a medal for your trophy case. That's always important. You want to leave this beautiful country with great stories, but also a souvenir wouldn't hurt. So the bronze medal matchup, Vaya Verbeek, the reigning queen, going up against Danielle Beecroft, who was a slalom overall champion in 2018. So this will be a great matchup. Must be testing the gate here because uh, either that or Vaya forgot to put her goggles on. Yep, testing the gate. So let's remember, We've got two heats here in this bronze medal matchup. So they'll go down, they'll get all the way back to the top, they'll switch lanes, and then the lowest combined time wins. So Vaya is without a doubt the queen of consistency. She put those skills to use last year, and that's how she found victory as queen. And she had this to say, She'd like to have even more consistent results across all the different disciplines, but she's aware of the fact she's better at some than others. But that's why she's been putting focus on those other disciplines. And 2020, she's going to uh, try to make it back-to-back -back queen seasons. When you get that crown, you don't want to give it up, do you? So you then focus on where you feel like you have some ground to make up. Here we go. And this is your bronze medal matchup. Heat one via Veerbeck. What can she do? Can she amass some points with her Queen of Crankworx defense? Wow, Vaya's looking quick. Yes, she is. Yeah, a little case there onto the tabletop, but safely through into the infamous flat turns that have made it so tricky for some of the riders tonight. There we go, Vaya. Leading this run strong, 0.68 ahead of Danielle Beecroft. One step closer to valuable bowl, valuable points and a bronze medal. Danielle Beecroft will have some work for herself. 0.68, the differential. All right, so having this gap here in this rhythm section, it's basically mandatory because you don't want to have to roll. You'd have to go so slow to roll that, but boom. Landing right here, that's called a case. Comes from Moto, where the cases are located right about there. So the BB almost touching ground, but that just shows the commitment. Roll the tape, but via Verbeek, making sure that she doesn't have to check up, go slow, and roll through the belly of that gap. Even if it means casing a little bit, it's still going to be faster than slowing down and rolling, isn't it? So the flat turns. Look at that. Daniela pushing the front wheel, but managing to get it around. Man, this has been so treacherous for some of the riders, but Baya getting through there clean. She'll take the advantage into the next heat. Well, there we go. Baya Verbeek is looking strong for that bronze medal. We're about to find out who is going to be looking strong for the bronze medal in the men's category? Will it be Matt Walker or Colin Hudson? The crowd will be cheering for both, but there will be a little extra decibel thrown into their cheer for Matt Walker, who's of course from New Zealand. He would love to pick up a medal here. So 
So we know Colin how good he's going to be out the gate. Matt Walker trying to keep him honest at the top of the, this course. Making their way into the rhythm section. Two different techniques they can. Matt Walker drawing closer to Colin now into the flat turns. It should play into his favor. And it is, he's going to take Whoa. the advantage. Oh, man. So Colin Hudson was the third place qualifier. Matt Walker was the fifth place qualifier. So tight racing against these two right here. But Colin Hudson Ooh. showing there's a reason he qualified two positions higher than Matt Walker. Oh, three nine <laughs> faster. I'm pretty down with Matt Walker's wacky, waving, arm flailing, inflatable tube man character he takes on in the finish line corral there. Yeah, I mean, Colin's got the smaller wheels, so it's going to be snappy and fast acceleration at the top. But Matt Walker is using those 29 inch wheels down the bottom to make up time on the flat turns and way more traction. 29s, huh? You're right. Look at that. So Matt Walker on the big wheels. Sure seems to be working. There we go. He'll really be waving his hands if he's able to get that bronze medal. Yeah, drops foot and hangs it out. That's awesome. Yeah, Andrew, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't think of a time we've seen too many 29ers in dual slalom. No, we've seen a bit of them, but it's mostly 27.5. And then, as we know, that's going to accelerate faster than a 29er. But there's more traction when it's a flat turn if you've got a 29er. There's more tire tread on the ground. This might be the only discipline where we have all three wheel sizes represented in the field. And as well as, like, pushing for the wins. Yeah. Guys like Cody Kelly out there on the 26-inch wheeled hardtail earlier in the day. Matt Walker with the 29er. And everybody else on those 27.5. Bavaya Verbeek illuminating her name in yellow, signifying her lead into the second run of the bronze medal matchup. But the big question will be whose name will be yellow at the bottom of this run between your one and two qualifiers, Jill Kinner on the left side of your screen, and Casey Brown on the right. Click, click. So Jill running a whole season here. We're so excited to have her back. She had this to say about her plans for the year. She's looking to enjoy the process. Of course, she wants to win as many events as possible, but it's all about that crown. She wants to put it back on her head. She's been knocked out of the throne and she does not like it. So she's back to answer to Via Verbeek. Okay, Ryder, random start. Ryder's ready, watch the gate. <laughs> So your number be one and number two qualifier, they are out the gate cleanly. This is awesome to see Casey Brown in the final here. Jill Kittner. She's looking clean and poised here. Both smooth through that rhythm section. Can Casey put some pressure on Jill down here in the flat turns? I think that white horse is a little bit faster, so she's going to take the advantage for the next heat in this gold medal matchup. It's just little things where Jill takes the advantage here. You know, she crossed the finish line 0.71 ahead, but it's little things like staying lower to the ground over that stall wall. Her sprinting is just second to none. Making me pedal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Making me pedal. <laughs> so Casey doing such a great job staying 0.71 close to Jill Kinner, but Jill Kinner is just so strong in the sprints there at the finish line, and she's able to scrub that stall wall. So, 0.71, totally doable for Casey Brown. We'll see what happens, but this is what it looks like for the men. Matt Walker with the advantage for that bronze medal. We're waiting on their second run, but the first run for the gold medal here yet to come between number one qualifier Bass Van Steenberg and then the man who's been so strong all night, Kyle Strait. Well, look at that, number one qualifier. He's made it look so easy. I think his strategy is paying off to be very fair. He's coming out so hot. And then he's able to relax in the flat turns, which is the most difficult part. So we first saw him go up against Greg Watts in the round of 16. You'll see Greg Watts back for speed and style tomorrow, but he had to hit the showers after going up against the number one qualifier. 
Then who did he meet up against? And then we pick it up against Thomas Slavik. But again, he was able to put a bit of an advantage before he gets to the flat turns. Is he going to be able to get to those flat turns and aggressive race pace come the final? Because he's done such a good job to have advantage before them. Here he had hometown hero Matt Walker, but again, he'd done all the hard work before it mattered. So we've been catching up with Bass periodically with interviews and everything that comes out of his mouth is just mirrored by his performance on the course right now. And it just gets harder though in dual slalom. You have to go up against faster and faster competitors. Right now, he's gonna have to get past Kyle Strait if he wants to make good on that number one qualifier and grab the gold medal. Okay. All right, right is ready. Well, no more waiting. This is our gold medal matchup. Bass Van Steenberg has done all the hard work. Can he go and get this gold medal clean from both of them? This is where Kyle Strait's become a little bit unstuck, but that was clean, Cam. <laughs> Hasn't been put to the test through the flat turns wow. yet. Wow! <laughs> so Kyle Strait, your seventh place qualifier now in the gold medal matchup, run number one, putting point two three on the number one qualifier, Bass Van Steenbergen. Oh, and he's ready to go back to the start right now. He's so anxious to get that gold medal. So Bass Van Steenbergen, it was all looking good to you, the stall confidently coming. But this is where. The pressure starts mounting. You know you've done all the hard work. He's too aggressive to that left turn, and he's just Aww. lost the back end. Oh, no, man. They lost the back end, made a little bit of a bobble, and lost some time to Cal Strait. I mean, the recovery was very impressive, though. To hold it to 0.23 after such a big bobble, it's funny because we, we talked to both of these riders throughout the day, and they both kind of had similar sentiments about knowing when to let up a little bit, all right, we're being told to take a look at Kyle Strait's chain right now. Oh, oh there we go. My. I mean, I would not want to be Kyle Strait's chain at any moment. Look at this right here. That chain is snapped. Now, this guy not only snaps chains, but he's been known to break sprockets. Something's got to give when you got that much horsepower just bearing down on the gear mechanisms of a bicycle. Absolutely crazy, exciting time. So yeah, the he's been known to break. He actually has to run stronger oh, rear cassettes the because he's broken the teeth off the of cassettes because he puts so much force into those things. So, Kyle Strait, plenty of time to get a new chain back on that bike, but Bass Van Steenberg is strong all night. We know he made a mistake and that caused him to slow down, but did he miss a gate? Let's take a look back at a replay and make sure both of Bass's tires were on the proper side of that gate. Thank you, Bass. All right, take a look. Now, Bass Van Steenbergen on the left side of your screen here. Now, there's the gate in question. Oh, oh that back tire. That might be was. way worse than just a bubble, Cam. I think you've caught something there. So he comes in, he's pushed the back, trying oh. to keep the power down. The front wheel's good, but I'm not sure yeah, about yeah, the yeah. back. Look, if <laughs> you would see the red flag right where that yellow dot is if his Oh, yeah, well, that's going to shake things up a bit, a 1.5. That is about as gray as that white flag is looking after all that dust being sprayed onto it. This is going to be interesting. We've got broken chains, we've got potential missed gates, and this is only the first heat of this gold medal matchup. Man, if they give Bass a 1.5 for that, that will... That may be all she wrote. Absolutely. So, Jill Kenner with the advantage for the gold medal matchup against Casey Brown via Verbeek with the advantage in this bronze medal matchup against Danielle Beecroft. And that's what we will see first here. 
Via Verbeek on the right side of your screen. Danielle Beecroft on the left. Okay. The differential between these two, 0.68. Okay, Aaron. Will Danielle be able to come back? All right, good right and pretty. So Vaya with the advantage in here, it's the heat two of the bronze medal matchup, 100% dual slalom here in Rotorua. Trying to amass some valuable points for her defense here. Vaya Weber's got to keep it clean. She's doing just enough, Cam. She's going to take the go. advantage, and that'll be your bronze medal winner, Vaya Verbeek from Canada. So way to go, Vaya. Obviously, she wanted to be in the final, duking it out for that gold medal. But when you're trying to just hold down that throne, every last point matters. So third place points going to Vaya Verbeek along with a bronze medal. So, Via Verbeek doing what she can here in this discipline to play as much defense as possible, knowing that Jill Kinder will most likely be her toughest competitor throughout the season. Let's catch up with your bronze medalist, Via Verbeek. Via, great riding all evening. You managed to win here last year. Not as good this year, but it is some points for the Queen of Crankworks title defense. Yeah. How do you feel? Definitely good points. Uh, I don't know, I'm not thinking of points too much just yet. I just want to go event by event, uh, both yesterday and today are events that I really enjoy, really want to do well at. So third today, it's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. It was a super fun track, so cool. Well, well done. All the best for the rest of the season. We had some great racing there. Thank you. Well, way to go to Via for Beak right there. When we get to Whistler, I'm sure it's going to be a tight battle for the queen, will it be between Jill and Vi? And if so, they'll be thinking back to these points earned here. And now, to figure out what the story will be for the men, Matt Walker, looking to get that bronze medal. He's got the advantage over Colin Hudson going into their last run. Oh, Matt Walker, the local favorite. He's like, ah, cool, fuck me, man. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be tough, you know, being from not New Zealand and going up against one of the fan favorites. You hear Colin Hudson talking about going, oh, man, nobody's cheering for me. They want you to win. But Colin Hudson, maybe he can turn that around and make it motivation. He's got 0.39 to make up. Matt Walker leading the charge here. Okay, we're good to go. All right. All right. Right is ready. Okay, riders, random start. Riders, ready, watch the gate. So can Mac Walker do it? He's already got a podium in the Enduro this year at Rotorua. So can he get another one? Colin Hudson, though, was fast in qualification, so we know he's got the speed. Listen to the crowd, Cam. Oh, yeah, see? That's got to be a to shut out if you're Colin Hudson, but look at him digging deep. Not enough. Matt Walker crosses the finish line first, adds to that advantage he has, and he will walk away with the bronze medal. And there you have it. Able to withstand the pressure of performing in front of the hometown crowd, Matt Walker. Another medal for him. That's awesome. Way to go, Matt Walker. Grabbing the bronze medal, grabbing the points, and not sharing his goggles with the crowd. It's still the beginning of a long week. He needs those goggles, folks. Oh, flawless through those flat turns. He's been able to hop the bike and readjust the direction. What? This one. That one's gone. So Matt Walker, of course, using that motivation from the crowd. Let's talk to him, Andrew. 
Well, Matt, that is great to see you. Did you, did you feel some pressure being hometown crowd here and trying to perform for them? Uh, definitely. Always feel pressure when you're on the start gate. Um, just try to have a lot of fun with this event. No real ex expectations from it. Just, yeah, out having a good time riding bikes. Yeah, of course you're having a good time. It's a great time when you're being successful. It's the start to a long week. You've already now had great results in two events. What else do you have in store for us for the rest of the week? What other events are you competing in? Uh, for me, it's like, well, for the first time, it's been a lazy week. So I've only got the downhill left to go. So going to just have a lot of fun on the bike for that one and see how we go. Well, Matt, you've already got two podiums. What do you fancy in downhill? Oh, we'll see if we can make it four third places. I don't know. We'll see. I'll be happy with that. <laughs> Number three, way to go. Keep the momentum rolling, Matt. It's fun watching your ride. Cheers, guys. Loving it. So there you have it. Matt Walker with that bronze medal. Who's going to take the gold? I can't wait to find out. Joe Kinner versus Casey Brown. That's going to be a doozy. So we walked you through, we walked you through how Jill Kinner made it in to the final. Let's take a look at how Casey Brown made it to the final matchup. Well, she had a workout out for her, but she qualified in second position. She was up against Matilda. She made small work of that into the semi-final for her. Great riding to the flat turns. So at this point, she's starting to think, all right, well, maybe maybe the timing was right when I got second place in qualities. Yeah, she's starting to believe in herself like we believed in her and we saw her name at number two in the qualification. So gaining momentum, gaining confidence here in the semi-final. So then, going up against B-Cross, knocking her out, continuing the momentum. Now she truly believes that she is, in fact, the second place qualifier because She's found herself going up against the number one qualifier. Yeah, I mean, matching up against Jill Kittner, something she wasn't sure she could do when practice started probably this morning, but she's really coming to her own in the slalom. So, going for the full trail bike setup. It seems to be a good choice out there. A few riders going for the slalom setups with the smaller short travel bikes with 26 inch wheels, but Casey Brown choosing that remedy and it seems to be working. Now, she's gonna need to find every last bit of speed here going up against Jill Kinder because she has a 0.71 disadvantage. Riders ready, watch the gate. And there we have it, Jill Kidner. She's got a big advantage here, but you can't ride too defensively on this course. Mistakes can happen in those lower turns. So both of them opting to jump up onto the tabletop cleanly through there. And this is where it's come all unstuck for so many riders tonight. Looking clean for both of them. Jill Kidner, she's going to take that gold medal. That is one, oh my goodness, huge one for her. There we go. Jill Kidner committing to a full Crankworx World Tour season in 2020 and starting as strong as you could possibly start. The gold in the air DH, the gold in the slalom. Somebody's back. So look back, I think, well, this is the top of the course here. I think Casey almost had a little bit of a bobble right toward the end, but she definitely held strong to the back tire of Jill Kenner right here. and. Qualifying second, getting second place. Good job for Casey Brown, but right now it's all about Jill Kinner. What do you say we talk to her? Well, Jill, you qualified fastest. You were able to back it up. You won ADH yesterday. Do you feel any pressure? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just used to it, I guess. Well, we had a great night watching the racing. What was the most difficult thing for you tonight? I mean, I felt like I was not riding the greatest in the first rounds, like sitting there in the gate waiting for, um, you know, the breaks and the holds. You're just kind of in the gate getting nervous. I made a few early mistakes and just tried to race into the final where I, like, my personal goal is to race my best in the final. And my first round was pretty good, but solid. <laughs> I was proud of it. So 
it's really fun being with Browner. Like, she's always a good time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a good course. Uh, it's nice to be back and, yeah, just try and build each step of the way, I guess. And how much did the course change throughout the evening for you? Yeah, a lot. It's so loose now. This is just like, we went from pretty nice packed at the start of practice and now it's just like duff and those those last uh, turns there's like a sharp edge to it so you have to be very precise and very patient to even like make it through <laughs> and when you're racing you want to push really hard and, and go but you just can't so sometimes it's better to be like safe and smooth well great start to your title defense well done again go enjoy that victory I will thanks guys yeah well it's always great to have Jill Kinder in the field and we missed her last year. She came back for the final event of the season. She was in Whistler, and of course, she totally killed it. So now she's back to form, trying to get that crown back from Vaya, and doing exactly what she needs to do to start the season with two wins in her first two events. But now back to the men. So Matt Walker grabbed that bronze medal. Who's going to grab the gold? Let's look back at run number one between Kyle Strait and Bass Van Steenbergen. So I'm curious to find out if they gave him the 1.5 for missing that gate. We're looking at the run in full speed right yeah, now. Yeah, we nice. haven't been given that confirmation, but there's the gate we're speaking about, the Carl straight. And then, luckily for him, <laughs> he didn't have too much pitting to do because he snapped the chain right near the finish. Okay, somebody is way too used to snapping chains when you can snap your chain and then not even like Flinch. Come close to crashing. He's like, yeah. oh, I did it again. Me and my horsepower. All right, let's take a look at what the differential is. Drum roll, please. Yep, there it is. Bass Van Steenbergen has to make up the maximum differential, 1.5, because he missed that gate. So look for Bass to throw caution to the wind and look for Kyle Strait to try to calm down and just ride his own race. Yeah, so he can take that strategy and he can throw it out the window. Bass Van Steenberg has got only one option. Go ridiculously fast, fast as he's ever gone before and force a mistake. But Kyle Strait is so experienced. I don't think he's going to let that happen. But there you go. Oh, I spoke this too is soon. Insane. Bass okay. Van Steenberg doing what he needs to do. Wow. Oh. And he's clean. Okay, what's it is going it to be? be the clock ticks. Come on. 1.08. Kyle Strait does it. Holy cow, that was wow. insane. Oh, that's Kyle incredible. Strait has not Black won a Crankworks gold Just medal since Dual Slalom in Whistler 2018, but he is a back on top. Wow, he wow. had to earn that one. What a race. Everything almost played back into Bass's favor there. Bass came out swinging so hot. Look you can Kyle. see visually Carl's probably looking at Bass and he's just <laughs> oh, almost thrown it all away. Somehow he's composed himself and he's got to the bottom of this track. Thank goodness he had that big margin. How did Carl Strait not crash? I mean, he pretty much landed on the uphill takeoff of the next jump and just muscled through. That's all it was, big muscle. So 1.5 seemed impossible for Bass Van Steenberg. And then we had that mistake from Kyle Strait. And Kyle just corrected, held it to 1.08, and was able to take the gold. And so surprising that he made a mistake. He just had to kind of keep it conservative. He had so much time to play with it. But he's done just enough to take that gold medal. Wow, Bass almost had it. So, it's all about performing under pressure here for Kyle Strait. Let's check in. Oh, hey, Cam. <laughs> oh, hey, Kyle. Well, Kyle, I don't even know where to start. Let's start right at that mistake in the rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> we can start there. That's where I want to yeah. start. Okay. I mean, we were saying that you just need to keep it conservative through the rhythms, but you had a huge mistake there. Yeah, it, well, let's talk about that one. <laughs> I don't know, I think I made that same mistake three times tonight. And uh, I don't know, somehow I just stay, try to stay smooth in those flat corners and not make mistakes, but I guess it worked out. That was, that was some gnarly racing. Yeah, and how did you bounce back? You qualified in seventh, and for your standards, that's a little bit low down the bracket. So what did you do to get confidence as those brackets went on? 
Uh, I had a, I had a one. My first run was pretty bad. I think it was on the, the white side, and I knew that was gonna hurt my my overall score in, in qualifying. But uh, the black side was a little bit better. So I don't know. I just tried to stay positive. Like as we, as you guys know, it's all about not making mistakes, and somehow I managed to still do it. But um, yeah, I guess just go each round round by round and and uh, pedal where I could, I guess. Yeah, well, clearly your speed was there with some mistakes and still taking that gold Thanks. medal. Well done, that's a big win for you. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, Kyle! Thanks, Cam. <laughs> Way to go, Kyle Strait. So stoked to see him on the top of the King of Crankworks leaderboard right now, pulling down 140 points. 100 for the win here today, and 40 points for his performance in Air DH yesterday. He told me last month that he was really making a run at this King of Crankworks, saying he's going to compete in more disciplines than usual. And look at that, number one next to his name. Way to go, Kyle Strait. Now, uh, we've got a lot of fun features every year during our broadcast, but one that I'm pretty excited about, we're calling Cam's Call Out. This is where I get to pick my favorite highlight from the day, and right now, undoubtedly, I gotta say my favorite moment was watching Kyle Strait, the horsepower of the gold medalist, snapping the chain, and moreover, it's so impressive to see this guy not even flinch. He snaps the chain and goes, oh, again, there's nobody else in the world who snaps chains at a rate that this human does, and it's not a testament to any weakness on the chain's behalf. It's a testament to the strength of this human right here. He's even broken rear cogs because he's got so much horsepower. Way to go, Kyle. Now, Queen of Crankworks overall standings. Look at that, that's a familiar face with the number one next to her name. It's not the biggest surprise for us here in the booth, Jill Kittner. She is two for two, 200 points via Veerbeck. Our reigning Queen of Crankworks, she's sitting in second. She's got a work cut out for this season if it's gonna start like that. <laughs> so this is why we recommend that all mountain bike fans, if they can, try to make it to a crankwork stop because the access to the best riders in the world is unrestricted. Get your photo taken with Kyle Strait, Jill Kinder, get some autographs. Inspiring the younger generations, that's what it's all about out here at Crankworks Festivals. And we're only just getting things going for Crankworks World Tour 2020. Tomorrow it's all about the cliff, speed and style. 5.30 local time here is when we'll be dropping the gate for another race. If you like slalom tonight, imagine slalom with backflips and 360s and all kinds of crazy tricks for point benefits. So join us tomorrow. But man, Andrew Needling, what a great race. When we saw this course and we talked to the riders, we knew it was going to deliver. What do you think? We got to keep this course for next year, right? Yeah, I'm blown away. I think Bass Van Sienmung was riding flawlessly all evening. I feel for him. It's really tough when the pressure mounts and he was doing what he needed to do there, but then made a mistake in what was arguably his strongest strongest section of the course. But Carl Strait, that's the experience paying through, huge win for him. And then no surprise in the woman, Jill Kittner has put the work in in the off season and it's paying off already. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, a couple hours ago, we said, this is going to be an exciting race that will kick off an exciting season. And I feel pretty confident that we did not lie to our friends, the people, you out there tuning in. For the Crankworks World Tour 2020, we are officially up and running. Thanks for joining us in the 100% Dual Slalom Road to Rio. We will see you tomorrow.